Now you had to know, going into Extreme Rules, you had six announced matches for the card, and only one of them was an actual Extreme Rules type of stipulation. You had to know, there was going to be some type of fucktardation going on tonight. And boy, oh boy, did this show not disappoint. <laughs> There's nothing like turning on Peacock and having this substandard, fifth-rate streaming service keep us on our toes. I mean, why, as an English speaker, would I want to have English audio running simultaneously with the broadcast? Like, why not have Spanish? Why not have French? Why not have both? Why not fucking have all of them at the same time? That's how you started off the show. <laughs> I've seen illegal streams with significantly better quality than something that's supposed to be backed up by NBC Universal. And isn't that Comcast? How the hell is a cable in all oh, it's Comcast? What the hell else more does that need to tell you? <laughs> well, that wasn't bad enough throughout the night during different wrestler entrances, of all the damn times to do it, you pick the dumbest time, Peacock's running ads, including during the Tribal Chiefs freaking entrance. What the hell are you all doing? So that right there, that's just the stupidity of Peacock. I haven't even talked about the show yet. Oh my God. A lot of crap that felt like, eh, if this was on a Raw or a SmackDown, these would have been like good feature matches or good main events for those shows, but certainly nothing that really rocked your boat. You had a six-man tag to kick it off. New Day versus Amos, a Amos, AJ, and Bobby Lashley. The first pay-per-view match for your new WWE champion is a six-man tag. Seems less than ideal. Crowd was really into the match, I'll give them that. But this, again, felt more like the type of six-man tag Raw main event that you would try to send the home, people home happy with. Why did you set this up to have Bobby Lashley eat the pin from Big E here? That seems unnecessary and stupid. You even had a spot where you had AJ tag himself and let him eat the damn pinfall there. Isn't that why AJ Styles is in this damn match to eat the pin? I said this, none of this shit makes any sense. But we know what it was now. It was so that way they could use the damn pay-per-view to build up to a WWE title match that's going to kick off Raw on Monday night. Whatever. Next. SmackDown Tag Team Championship. It was a decent banger, but couldn't this have been a tornado tag? Couldn't we have mixed it up a little bit? I said it was very good. Usos retain. No real complaints. It's just like, again... Yeah, I expected this was going to be good, and it was. But I feel like I've seen as good or better from both of these teams um, on SmackDown in the past. So I don't see what was so special or different about this. And again, there was nothing extreme about this. Why would you have a show called Extreme Rules when only about 16.67% .6 of your damn show is actually going to have an Extreme Rules type of stipulation to it? Maybe, 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 though. The, the plan was to make us die of extreme laughter. And we got plenty of that at the end of that main event. Uh, but the shit that I assumed was going to be all types of bad certainly lived up to the, the expectations. Raw Women's Championship, Alexa Bliss versus Charlotte Flair. And the first thing that really stood out to me is that these two look like co fighting at the dive-ass strip club, didn't they? couple of meth heads, so heavily make, made up in the face and looking plastic as shit, but cheap type of plastic, it was horrible. Not as horrible as the match, of course. It was sloppy. Like, of course it was. It had Charlotte's botchy ass in it and it had Alexa Bliss's ass in it. Of course this thing was botchy. You know, it's surely the fans pop because, oh, they did moves. Doesn't matter that... None of them looked crisp. None of them looked good. It was sloppy as shit. And of course it was. Look at the whole, who the hell was in this match. And of course Charlotte retained. <laughs> Hashtag LOL Charlotte wins. What the fuck else did you expect was going to happen? But of course, that could be the end of it. 
could just have this match and move on. No, no, no. We had to make it about the damn doll Lily and Charlotte going postal, so to speak, on damn Lily after the match. When the doll is more over than both of the women that just wrestled for 10 plus minutes, that's not a good sign. That is a representation of so many things that is wrong with your product. And yet, here we are. Here we sit. Of course, this is exactly why the hell they buried the fiend at WrestleMania. So that way, Charlotte can bury this shit later. This is where we're at. And then the... the, 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 the Classiest thing of all. The fucking cum tablet that was on Alexa Bliss's mouth. Pop, pop, fizz, fizz. Oh, how much it sucks it is. Like, you're gonna do this shit, don't you do it, you dumb bitch, and have your mouth open to where everybody will fucking see it and then it doesn't work. <laughs> it's not Fiend Seth Rollins bad. But it certainly wasn't any good. <laughs> Look at me, call it Tara Pot and Lily. What exactly were we going for with the foaming effect? Like, what the hell was the point of that? <laughs> I can just picture it now. Vince McMahon was quoted backstage, and I quote, Ah, such god shit! Unquote. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Moving on. The United States Championship Triple Threat. Uh, yeah, the one thing that dawned on me, I'm like, you know, I don't think Jeff Hardy is that much older than Sheamus. Let me look this up. Did you realize that Jeff Hardy, for all the years he's been around in WWE and in wrestling, he's only five months older than Sheamus. Like, if there's anything you walk away from this show and you're like, wow. You learned that tonight if you didn't already know. And maybe a lot of you maybe thought it, but didn't realize it. Sheamus is only five months younger than Jeff Hardy. <laughs> and you got two of these guys, Jeff Hardy, who has been a big star in the business for a long period of time. Sheamus, who was once going to be the next generation of top dude. Both sitting here and playing second fiddle to Damian Priest in a mid-card title match. <laughs> because, of course. Now, Jeff Hardy was really over with the crowd. Might have been a spot if you were so inclined to do so that you would have had Jeff Hardy go over. But they didn't. But he was really, really over. crowd was really into this. And Damian Priest comes through with the almighty roll-up finish because that's what the people came to see. Again, that's such God shot. Oh, but wait, there's more. Now, I know what you're thinking to yourself. Wait a second. This is a pay-per-view from a major wrestling company, and it actually has a, a black wrestler being prominently featured. This does not compute. I understand if you watch all egg white wrestling, you may not grasp that concept. Uh, but it's bad when WWE is actually doing better in terms of the diversity game than you. Like, that's really pathetic. SmackDown Women's Championship. Of course, Bianca Belair wasn't going to get her win back. Of course, Becky Lynch wasn't going to lose this match. Of course. Why have anything clean and decisive? Why have anything that would potentially build the heat between the two of them or potentially leave you a satisfying finish? Why do any of that? Instead... Out comes Sasha Banks, where you probably got as many people talking about how Sasha Banks looks and what she's wearing, ignoring the 300 fucking coats of foundation she has on her damn face. Give me a damn break here. But of course Sasha Banks would come back now. And of course, instead of first going after Becky Lynch, who's the bitch that took her spot at SummerSlam and won the belt from Bianca, she attacks fucking Bianca Belair. Random of random and then stupid in terms of logic on top of it. I mean, eventually she attacked Becky too, although uh, there's a piece of me that wondered like, damn, I almost wish this was part of some type of nefarious plot and you were doing some type of like beginnings of a two-woman power trip type of thing. Like, why not? Um, but of course they bring Sasha ba Banks back here. 
And of course, they intentionally create one gigantic fucking clusterfuck. So now you're going to have this triple threat shit and nobody's really going to get over and it's going to be stupid. And it's going to be such good shit. God. The only <laughs> saving grace was the <laughs> Extreme Rules Universal Championship. <laughs> Would have been nice if I'd been able to experience the entirety of our tribal chief's entrance, but thanks to Peacock, I had to watch some stupid ass ads. The match itself, though, went about how I expected. The demon, smaller, so it makes Roman's power stuff look more powerful. Also, Roman, being athletic enough as a bigger guy compared to the demon, could make the demon's athletic stuff really look fantastic. Also, these guys have good chemistry together. You know, even the shit like the four kendo sticks tied together, like this is well done, well pieced together. The timing of having the Usos come out and interrupt, like it was perfect, all of that stuff. But my God, then there was the finish. <laughs> Was it good? Was it bad? It doesn't matter. It's like Kenny Omega's stint with the sparklers earlier this year. Sometimes you just transcend all definition and classification and you just appreciate the splendor, the majesty, the magnificence of what you have just experienced. The best way I could sum it up like this is there's a point in the match where the demon is laying on the ground. And all of a sudden the lights go down. And then you get like the beat of a heart. A doo -doo. And then the demon convulses. Out of rhythm, of course. I mean, he is white after all. What would you expect? Doo -doo. Doo -doo. Doo -doo. Doo -doo. Doo -doo. And then he comes up. He stands up. Then for some fucking reason, his music is playing during the background as he's making this big damn comeback. In a mask that we already saw Roman Reigns figured it was probably going to go out to the ring, so he made sure he had a mask ready to go. Fantastic. That's why he's the head of the table, folks, and you're not. The demon gets up on the top rope, under the dark rim and run lights, in the smoke. And the top rope comes down. Down goes the demon, ass over tea kettle. I believe he busted his ass. <laughs> Roman Spear, Bob's your uncle, one, two, three, yay! Ha <laughs> ha! Look up to the hunter and Hurst to Helmsley above and thank him for this miracle! <laughs> Who the blue is the blue? The fox named Vince McMahon thought that this Vince McMahon was a good Vince McMahon. The 190 pound guy gets on the top rope and the top rope snaps. <laughs> what possible explanation could you have? And none of this shit like, well, the, the demon was just too powerful and he went too far. No, hashtag big dick demon. You want to make something different and unique about the demon outside of the entrance and the damn body paint? Well, here you fucking go. Due to the size and weight of the demon's tremendous dick, the top rope succumbed to the fucking pressure. There you go. There's a perfect explanation. What else you got? Just why? <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> Earlier this year, what the hell was that? Revolutions or whatever the hell it was. Kenny Omega sparkler shit. It's one of the most magnificent fuck-ups I've ever seen. Made that pay-per-view worth $50 all damn day. This right here was an even better value for the money. I got to see Roman Reigns have a good quality main event match. Got a type of WWE Vince McMahon finish that you've come to expect and love to loathe over the years. 
and it only cost me like five bucks a month on this fifth rate streaming service. <laughs> Nobody knew what the fuck to make of it. What the hell is going on here? Oh! <laughs> Sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> People are going to debate whether that was great or whether that was shit. Who cares? Enjoy it. <laughs> they had a 190 pound guy get on the top rope and had him fucking snap. The demon. <laughs> The the heartbeat stuff was kind of cool if Finn would have done it more in rhythm with the music. Like, don't you practice this shit ahead of time? But then it's weird having the music play in the background. Like, this felt like some Kevin Dunn, what's up, Doc? Fuckery. If there ever was. That's such good shit. You yeah, let me know in the comments what you thought of Extreme Rules, especially if you watched that main event. Oh, my God. We'll always remember this finish. If there's anything you can say about this pay-per-view, you will never, e e e ever forget this finish as long as you live. He busted his ass. <laughs>